Hi folks, Chuck McCown here. There's been some renewed interest in testing your VACX and seeing if your blower is shot. How much suction do you have? Or really, how many cubic feet per minute are you moving? Because cubic feet per minute translate directly into the velocity of an airstream in a pipe. Um, and that's what you need is velocity to push the dirt out, okay? The dirt could hit terminal velocity at some point if you really got enough air movement and, and lift. So I went through several iterations trying to prove whether or not my VAC X was any good. I, I built, that summer I built pedo tubes. I, I, I threw ping pong balls with metal tape on them down tubes with, uh, with speed radar. Um, I used hot wire anemometers. I used turbines. Um, I did everything I could to try to, to nail down the velocity of the air movement in the pipe um, because, I, because you can translate that directly in a CFM. Well, what I finally ended up doing was this, uh, this Venturi tube design, which is very well known and is very well characterized in the literature. And it's simple. You can get all these parts at, at a Home Depot. These are all just ABS drain waste and vent pipes. And I'll be posting a, uh, a full set of drawings as well as this, uh, as well as this video on, on the website. Um, but just quickly, this is a cam lock. Uh, this is the type that you put into your hoses, a four inch cam lock. And it just almost doesn't fit inside this four inch ABS. You might be able to see a little bulge right there. I forced this together with a hydraulic press, I think. I might have used a sledgehammer in a four by four, but um, anyhow, it does fit. Uh, I'll get you exact measured drawings of this, um, but you know, this is roughly a foot. And then it necks down, and this is the actual Venturi, okay? You got a big tube necking down into a small tube. And this is about a foot long, but again, don't take any of the things I say in this video as exact. This is the small Venturi section, okay? It's got a quarter inch tapped hole. You can tap these holes. This is a national pipe thread tapped holes, but you could also glue something in there. You're basically just, um, you're just sampling the air pressure at the midpoint of the Venturi. Then it necks back up. And then this is the, this is the upstream end, okay? And another one of these, tapped in here about four inches in, nothing special. And then at the end of this, I've taken some sections of fluorescent light grid, and I've cut them and slid them in and glued them in with ABS cement. And that, what that does, at least according to the textbooks, is you're trying to get a, a flow in this section of the pipe that is even. Um, you don't have regions of, of higher, higher speed air and lower speed air. You're trying to get kind of a, a smooth uniform flow and that's what these, these grid things are supposed to have done. And then, then they recommend, that's why this is longer is because it has more time to smooth out. And so we're sampling the air pressure here and here, and we're measuring it in a very low, low pressure unit called inches of water column. This is a cheap manometer, okay? I think they're in the neighborhood of 30 bucks, all over Amazon. And they measure these really low, um, these really low pressures. Now, what you want here is inches of water. Let's see what I've got here. It says inches of H2O. I don't know if you can see that right there. But, um, and, then, and then what you want to do is you want to push the differential pressure. Because we're measuring the difference between the pressure on this end and the pressure on this end. And that air pressure, with the air flowing this way, will be higher, or yes, exactly. it'll be higher over here and lower over here. So the air is coming in this end, and this is the end you would hook up to your VAC X, okay? And so you wanna make sure it's zeroed out on the meter, and then start your VAC X and throttle it up. And then the reading you get here 
you'll have to you'll have to follow the lines on this this graph and again I'll publish all of this stuff so that uh, if you're getting what we would see a lot of times would be say 10 inches of pressure difference and our altitude here is in the in the four to you know but roughly 5,000 uh, foot range and then you'd come over here and you'd read well it's almost a thousand cubic feet per minute now here's an interesting thing once I spent that summer developing this thing and testing it I took it over to our local ditch witch dealer and I went up to a brand new machine I, I, I had with their permission uh, I don't know if it was FX 60 or HX 75 plugged it in fired it up it measured low and the local guy says hey your your rig isn't any good sorry but it's it's bogus so I was fretting and I, uh, I, I visited with a friend of mine who is a, a, an expert in airflow. That's his whole career. He says, oh, Chuck, here, here's all you got to do. Here's a formula. He says, you have to adjust this for altitude. And so he gave me a correction factor or a formula or some kind of transfer function or something. And I plugged it into the spreadsheet that makes this graph. And then lo and behold, um, it read more. Um, but still wasn't quite up to snuff. And so then I'm wondering, well, why is it Ditch Witch says it should be this CFM, but I'm measuring even adjusted for altitude a little bit lower. So I went and I got the actual manufacturer's data sheet for the blower, okay? And these, a lot of these machines have a roots blower and so sh you know, and the air, comes in and goes out and uh, they've got these lobes you know these figure eight shaped lobes inside that that mesh with each other and uh, when one sideways the other one's vertical and they just they just paddle the air out if you look at the manufacturer specification it might say 1000 CFM but it'll have a whole bunch of other 100 CFM and these will all have RPMs out here by the side and either you take the top level one or you look up the absolute max number and you will find uh, this will make a thousand CFM at say 3600 RPM but if you uh, if you if you actually put a tachometer we have an optical tachometer which it just requires a little piece of reflective tape you put on like the pulley that runs the blower you put a little piece of tape on it and then you just hold this thing by, beside it and then you can measure how fast are you actually turning that blower you're not turning it at the max rpm that the blower manufacturer specs out in their spec book however you'll find almost all of these manufacturers the big big super G sucker trucks and all the V's and all the D's and all, all these guys that make these things, they'll take that top absolute max CFM of the blower, okay? And that's what they'll say their machine is rated to do. Well, okay, if you were running, if you were at sea level and if you were running it at that RPM, which they don't, and if you were measuring it right at the, uh, the inlet port of that roots blower then maybe you could see that CFM but if you measure it at a lower RPM say a lot of them are spec'd at like 3600 and you'll find these VACs actually are dialed down to like 3000 RPM or 2900 and sometimes after some wear and tear the throttle mechanism doesn't actually kick them all the way up so if you have that or if you've got a big old long hose back here to your saw and you put this this thing on the end of that hose it's just going to go lower and lower and lower and lower each time so everything will decrease the CFM from the published figure now if you should want to actually measure what's your CFM at your saw you can do that with this rig okay so you've got your saw here and your your tractor pulling it okay and you got your vacuum port right here well you can insert this on that vacuum port but you'll have to put another fitting in right here you'll have to put like a, a female cam lock here 
and make sure you don't allow any any dirt to actually flow only air because any dirt that goes through this is going to wipe out that that grid pattern of the the, the so-called air straightener so cam locks are available at your local many places plumbing supply shops I'm sure you guys are running saws, you know where to get cam locks because somebody, somebody's always going to be driving over your hoses or dragging them on the street and wearing holes in them or driving the truck too fast and breaking your hose off or whatever. So cam locks, I'm sure you guys can find these other parts you can definitely find at any, any hardware store. Three inch and four inch. Uh, the manometer, just M-A-N-O-M-E-T-E-R. Is something that you'll find Amazon has a bazillion of these things and then you just need a couple little hose to some kind of hose fittings to, to be able to connect it in here I believe that's 1 8 to and then that's a quarter inch national pipe thread doesn't really matter how you make this connection folks you can use a I don't care soda straw whatever as long as it doesn't leak um, and I don't glue this thing together. Uh, I've never found a need to glue it together. Sometimes it's a little long and you want to pop it apart and transport it. Um, so there it is. Go out and measure your backs and see if you've got enough suction. If you're low on suction, that's the problem. You're having clogs and you're not cutting as fast as you can go. I've been told, this is anecdotal, that the guys that switched from like Ditch which FX60s and went to the guzzler trucks are all of a sudden magically getting twice the footage they were before. Now there's gotta be only reason one reason for that. FX60 is specced out around a thousand CFM. Of course at the saw it's gonna be less. Um, these big B, big G trucks are they claim they're like four thousand, six thousand CFM. I think that's again only if you measured it at the port. I think that's the, the spec of the blower. I don't think if you get back on the end of the hose, you're going to see that. But I'll bet you you're going to see 2000 CFM. So I tell people um, that ask me, well, how much CFM do we really need at the saw? And I tell everybody, I think you need at least 2000 CFM, just based on my own experience and what I'm hearing from the field. So if you, may, if you hook this up to your old FX60 and you find out you're only getting five inches of water column differential here, your blower is shot. Your blower is totally shot and it needs to be replaced. There are um, non-ditch witch sources for those blowers. Uh, they're kind of a commodity item. Contact me if you, if you want that information. Um, but that's, my, my crew was cutting and they are like, Chuck, there's gotta be something wrong with our, our uh, vac. And, and uh, I said, why? It's FX60. That's what we were told to use. Well, this other crew on this other street is using FX60, and they're not having any of the troubles that we're having. I'm like, ah, I don't know. I can't hardly believe that. So they, they, swapped, they swapped vacs one day. All of a sudden, all of our problems went away. And that's what got me thinking, huh, how do you measure? How do you measure how, how good your vac suction is? You can't just do it by inches of mercury of, of vacuum. That's... That's kind of meaningless. It's more, you need to measure the airflow. And so I was talking to the local ditchwich dealer and they're like, hey, we don't know. We don't know how you measure that stuff. We don't have a way of testing it. So that's what led to this long trip here. And you know, as soon as I built this machine, put it on that FX60, I found out, yeah, it was getting about 400 CFM. Swapped a brand new blower in there, voila, going like crazy again. So that's the reason for this video. I hope it's helpful. Please take a look at our website please buy some micro trenching saw blades from us because we have the fastest cutting longest lasting lowest costing and lowest cost per cut foot blade in the known universe okay so if you really want to cut down your expenses on saw blades go with us if you really want to make more money by cutting more foot footage of saw blade per day Go with us. We'll make you more money here. We'll save you money here. And those two combined make a big improvement in your bottom line. Whoever's doing your books will say, wow, I love that net income on my profit and loss sheets. So anyway, got to plug my blades every chance I get. Thanks.